Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we will review how to find the constellation Lyra in the summer sky. The constellation Lyra is one that is fairly small in the sky, but it is really easy to find because of its recognizable pattern and the bright star Vega that stands out within its borders. So when you take a look at this picture, the star that stands out, that is Vega. So let's take a look at the shape. When you take a look at this shape, hopefully you can see this parallelogram shape right here, and then a small ring above that parallelogram. I kind of like to think of this as like a diamond ring. Here is the ring portion, and then here would be the diamond, and Vega stands out. That's just what the pattern looks like to me, and oftentimes the patterns of the constellations do not always reflect what it represents in the sky. The constellation of Lyra dates back to ancient Middle Eastern cultures, and they first identified the constellation as a vulture, which you can see in this depiction here. And in fact, the name Vega is Arabic for vulture. But the ancient Greeks identified Lyra as a harp. And this story goes back to the ancient tale of Orpheus and Eurydice. The tale of Orpheus and Eurydice in Greek mythology is a fascinating one. However, in this video, we're just going to purely focus on how to find the constellation Lyra. Here is another picture of Lyra. So as you examine it, see if you can find Vega. Vega is the brightest star in the constellation. Now can you find the parallelogram shape underneath Vega? So let's take a look at the pattern. Here we have the parallelogram shape, and then we have Vega, which makes up the bright part of the diamond ring. Again, this doesn't represent a diamond ring, it's just a mnemonic device that I use to help me remember what it looks like. Here we have another picture of Lyra that represents the harp in the sky, and use it as a form of practice to help you find and determine what this constellation looks like. So hopefully you're able to see the parallelogram shape that is situated right underneath the bright star of Vega. Now let's review the other constellations that surround the constellation of Lyra. So as you take a look at this picture and observe, try to see if you can find the brightest star. If you can, then you're looking at the constellation of Lyra, which has the bright star Vega. Next to Lyra, which I'll point out right here, we have the constellation of Hercules, which takes up a large portion of the sky. And then right next to it, we have Corona Borealis, which is known as the Northern Crown. So if you can find Lyra, you want to try to look for the H of Hercules, which is what I see right here. Um, and then we have Corona Borealis. So if we were going to take a look and outline these constellations, here is what we're looking at. We have the Harp of Lyra, Corona Borealis, and Hercules right here. The other constellations that surround it would be Draco, that is up in this picture at the top of the photo, and then Ophiuchus is down at the bottom. So if you can find Lyra, use this as a way to help you find Hercules, Corona Borealis, and even Draco. Lyra is also a part of the asterism called the Summer Triangle. Now, an asterism is not a true constellation, but rather a pattern that we connect in the sky that will help us find other constellations. So if we take a look at the Summer Triangle, you want to identify the three brightest stars and then connect them to make a triangle. This is what it looks like. So the three stars that make up the Summer Triangle are Vega, which is a part of Lyra. We have Deneb, which is a part of the constellation called Cygnus. And then Altair, which is part of the constellation called Aquila. Now, if you live in, a po in an area that has high population, lots of light pollution, the Summer Triangle really can stand out to you, even with the light pollution, because these stars are bright. So now we'll break down what the constellations are and what they look like within the Summer Triangle. So here you have Lyra, and Vega is the bright star within Lyra, 
And then you have Cygnus, which is also sometimes called the Northern Cross, um, and rightfully so because it does make a huge cross pattern in the sky. And Cygnus is known, also known as a swan in terms of Greek mythology, if you look at the background there. And then Deneb is the bright tail star of the swan of Cygnus. And then you have Altair right here, and this this picture only shows a portion of the constellation Aquila. And when you look at Aquila, Altair is really the only star that stands out in that constellation. And Aquila is known as an eagle in terms of Greek mythology. So to review, we have Lyra right here with the bright star Vega. You have Cygnus right there with the bright star Deneb. And then you have Altair in the constellation Aquila. Be sure to use the Summer Triangle to help you find Vega and the constellation of Lyra. So at this point of the video, I'm hoping you're becoming more familiar with the constellation pattern of Lyra. So if you're looking at this photo, you should be able to identify Lyra and then the parallelogram shape that sits right underneath Vega. So we have Vega right here and then the other star pattern right there. So to review the details of Lyra the Harp, it is a constellation that is best seen in the summer months, and it is classified as a seasonal constellation, as opposed to being a circumpolar one, which can be seen all year round, or a zodiacal one in which the sun passes through. This constellation can be seen in the summer months. And if you can find the asterism called the Summer Triangle, Vega is the brightest star within the Summer Triangle, so that's the easiest way to find it. There are a few celestial objects that sit within Lyra. One is the Ring Nebula. So if you're interested, turn your telescope to this constellation and see if you can find it. Good luck with finding Lyra and please leave any questions or comments below.